Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered together for worship this morning. This truly is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome all of you as we have come and gathered together, both here in the sanctuary as well as those who join us online. For together we create a unique and wonderful community of faith that lifts our hearts and minds and voices in praise to God. And what a gift it is for us to have a chance to do so together today. Today's Confirmation Sunday, a wonderful gift in the life of our church as we celebrate the statements of faith from our Confirmation students, our 8th graders this year. And you'll see various pieces throughout the service that will lift that up for us together today. It's also, an, I guess, an opportunity to welcome those of you who are guests and visitors with us, who have especially families and friends who've come to celebrate this wonderful day with our young people. But whether you are here for confirmation or just decided today was the day you'd like to try Unity Presbyterian Church, we are grateful that you are here. And if you are looking for a church home, I do hope that you will find unity to be a place of worship and service that God might be calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you can speak with me, speak with someone sitting near you, that we might have opportunity to welcome you and answer any questions that you might have. Along those lines, I hope if you're here in the sanctuary that you might fill out the friendship paths. They are usually on one end of the pew or the other. This is a chance for us to have a record of all who've come and gathered for worship here in the sanctuary. I hope a chance for you to greet one another by name as well following the service as that friendship pad is passed down and back. That way you'll be able to greet one another together this morning. So guests and visitors, please include a, an address, a phone number, email, some other way for us to be in touch with you in this week that is ahead. Following the service today, we've got lemonade on the lawn in the fellowship hall. We were a little worried about the rain uh, today, and so we've set everything up in the fellowship hall. So following the service, please do come to the fellowship hall and enjoy some time of fellowship and cookies. There's lots and lots of cookies uh, there that we might have a chance to celebrate that together today. This morning is also the first Sunday in which we're using our new usher teams, uh, and, and so I hope that if you are not already signed up on an usher team, please see information in the bulletin to do that, and perhaps even to lead a team. The usher team should serve roughly about every other month just for a single Sunday, so please be a part of that as well. Uh, we have Safe Place training this afternoon at 2 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall and then a Vacation Bible School meeting today at 3. Uh, so Safe Place is for all those who work with children and youth if you need to update or, or take that training uh, to help to keep our children um, and youth safe here at Unity. Again, that's at 2 o'clock and open to anyone who'd like to come and to be a part of that time together. This evening, we also have a Taizé worship service in the Historic Sanctuary. It's a quiet, contemplative, prayerful, musical service, uh, and hope that you'll come and be a part of that as well. Finally, today is also Peanut Butter and Jelly Sunday, and so we have opportunity to rejoice and bring the items for uh, donation to the Fort Mill Care Center together. Coming up over the next several weeks, we have Grants Camp registration closes on Friday, so be sure you've signed up for that. Saturday, we're hosting a pancake breakfast for Bethel Woods Camp and Conference Center. There's information in the bulletin about that as well. Next Sunday morning, the men's chorus will sing at both services, so uh, no advanced uh, preparation required. Just come on Sunday morning prepared to sing, so I hope you'll see the information in the bulletin and, and join in that. And also next Sunday after both services, we'll be releasing uh, butterflies, hopefully caterpillars that have turned into butterflies that you have been raising over the last several weeks. We'll do that after both services next Sunday. And looking ahead one further week, the graduate uh, Sunday will be on May the 19th. We'll have a congregational breakfast in their honor uh, that morning and, um, and look forward to celebrating with our graduates in worship at the 11 o'clock service. Uh, special thanks to Megan Watson for uh, joining me in worship today. Uh, most of you know Megan's our interim uh, youth ministry associate and grateful to have you, Megan, as a part of worship this morning. And one more word is that Stewardship Commitment Sunday was last Sunday. And if you've not yet had a time to turn your time and talent forms or your uh, pledge commitments for the next program year, it's not too late. So please be sure to do that uh, as soon as possible as well. But let us call ourselves to worship together.
please stand with me, if able, as we lift our voices in our responsive call to worship. Christ's gift of salvation prepares us with strength. Jesus goes before us and is lifted up, the hope of the world. Your divine mystery spurs us on to share the good news. We wait in anticipation for the comfort of your promises, always giving thanks. Let us worship Lord God.
please be seated. We have been called to follow Christ by obeying his one commandment, that we love one another as he has loved us. Let us now confess how we have fallen short of that love, first in unison and then silently. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him above. Amazed we stand looking up to heaven, unable to trust your promises of power through the Spirit, thinking we can live a life of faith all by ourselves. We fail to come together to hear your word and to know the blessings of community. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of Jesus Christ and sharing the good news throughout the world. Amen. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our first reading comes from the Songbook of Israel, the Psalms. Let us hear the word of the Lord to us today from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing with trumpets and the blasts of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound in everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Oh, when the world is silent. Amen. Thank you very much. At this time, let me invite other children to come and join the children's choir and myself down here on the steps that we might have a few special moments together. If you are watching from home, hope that you'll draw near the screen and be a part of this time together as well. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good. You are four now. Are you really? That is great. Very good. Very good. That's something to celebrate, right? Yeah. Just like worship is always better when you're here. It's so good to have y'all with us for worship this morning. And thank you very much for the children's choir for singing with us and for everybody who comes to be a part. It is always great. Always great to have you here. Now this morning we're thinking a little bit about the ways in which you know, we're all a big part of the church together. And you have a very important part about being in the church here as coming up for children's time. But there are other people that sometimes maybe that we might know who have told us a little bit about who Jesus is or, or shown us a little bit about God's love. Who do you think there are some of those people might be? Who, who tells you about Jesus or, or tells you a little bit about God's love for you? Jesus does, that's right. Yeah, that's right. How about like moms or dads? Did any of your moms or dads tell you about Jesus? Yeah. Grandma. Absolutely. Grandparents for sure. That's right. Yeah. So how about here at the church maybe? Does anybody all go to, what do you think, George? Me? Well, I thank you. I do. I try. That's right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that is good. So. Well, that's a lot of people. That's right. Yeah. So maybe like Sunday school teachers or, or maybe um, in the choir, right? Miss, Miss Margaret might do a little bit of that as well. Or, or um, all kinds of people that might sit by us in the pews or those sorts of things. So there's lots of people who help us to learn about Jesus, right? And guess what? There are ways in which you can do that for other people too. And I saw some of these pictures and I printed them off and wanted to see if there were some that y'all could tell me here. What do you think is happening here in some, like in this picture here? They're like just saying hi to each other, right? So, yeah, that's one way that we can maybe tell people about Jesus. Or how about this one? Can you tell what's happening here? What's this person doing? Opening the door. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So how about this one here? Can you all see this one? What's this guy's 
He's on crutches, but what's, what's the child doing here? Over in the groceries, exactly. That's right, that's right. And y'all, can y'all see this one here? What happened here? Can you tell? Yeah, the girl ran over his foot with her bike, but she said sorry, right? So, yeah. So there's all kinds of things and ways in which even you as children are able to teach other people all about Jesus and how much, how much God loves us. So whether we're children or whether we're adults, we all have a chance to be a part of the church and to tell others about how much God loves us and what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus. So can y'all help me remember that this week? All right, well, let's pray a little bit together. I'll pray a little bit first and y'all can repeat after me. All right, let us pray. Dear God, God, we thank you you. for Jesus Jesus. and your great love love for all of us. us. Help us us. to tell and show show. other people about Jesus and how much you love them. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for coming up today. If you are headed to change out of your robes or first grade and under headed to children and worship or nursery or back to your seats, we're going to surround you all with our song of blessing. Our second scripture reading for this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, from the first chapter. We'll read verses 6 through 14 together today. Now, the book of Acts is actually a continuation of the gospel according to Luke, picking up the story after Jesus' resurrection as the church begins to live into this new reality that God has unleashed upon the world. And so it is appropriate that we would turn to Acts this morning after four weeks of sermons on Jesus' post-resurrection appearances as we have found them in the Gospels. Now, as the Acts of the Apostles is addressed to Theophilus, which literally means one who loves God, may we learn to love God more and more as we hear this word to us today. So when the disciples had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, it's not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up. And a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered the city, they went to a room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'd like to begin this morning by asking you to just reflect for a minute and about a moment in your life when you felt closest to God. Not for a season, but When did you have an experience of really feeling and knowing that Christ was with you? When was a time that you knew the Holy Spirit 
was at work in your life. For just a minute, think about that. Now that I hope you have some moment in mind, I want to ask you to also think about who else was there in that moment. Were you completely by yourself, say alone on a walk in the woods or staring at the sunset over the ocean? For some of you, that probably was the case. But I suspect that for almost all of us, in the moments when we felt closest to God, we knew that Christ was with us, we experienced the Holy Spirit at work in our life, there was at least one other person there, and probably more than just one. Yes, well, it is certainly possible for God to show up while we are all alone. A life of faith almost always includes others in a community of faith. That was true for the disciples too, right? Jesus was raised from the dead. We hear in verses just before the ones we read for today that he appeared to the disciples for 40 days before gathering with them on the Mount of Olives. And while the text moves quickly into Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit, commissioning the disciples as witnesses to the ends of the earth and Christ's ascension into heaven, what struck me in reading this text for this particular week was just the first couple verses. When they had come together. Sure, Jesus could have commissioned all of them individually. He probably could have set up 30-minute, one-on-one annual evaluation meetings with them to check on their goals and yearly progress. He probably could have given each of them the gift of the Holy Spirit all by themselves. And Jesus could have even ascended into heaven in the middle of the night with no one else around just like he rose from the dead before anyone got to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning to see it. But no, when they had come together, all these things begin to happen. And my friends, the same thing is true for you and for me, for us today. There are moments when, as followers of Jesus, we are forced to be apart. But God's plan and intention is for us to be together, to be the church, to be a variety of people and gifts working together for the common good. As theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer once wrote, the physical presence of other Christians is a source of incomparable joy and strength for the believer. It is grace, nothing but grace, that we are allowed to live in community with Christian brothers and sisters. And that, my friends, is at least part of what we are celebrating today on Confirmation Sunday. Many of you will know that Confirmation actually begins with baptism. And all of our students this year, at least, were baptized as infants or as children. So they do not remember the water being dribbled on their heads and running down their noses. They do not recall parents or other guardians making promises and statements of faith on their behalf. They do not remember you as a congregation promising to love and support their parents and to help to teach them about Jesus about God's great love for us, and about what it means to be a disciple. But somewhere along the way, we all came together. We welcomed our young people. We told them that they belong to God, that they are a part of us, and we are a part of them. And just like the disciples did in our text for today, while we were waiting, we did a lot of praying. Some of those prayers were with heads bowed and fingers folded. Some of those prayers were with our hands and our feet through courageous examples of faith in moments of 
tragedy and in the midst of a fallen world. Some of that praying was with words shared in children and worship or in Sunday school or children's choir, youth group, and even confirmation. Yes, we all came together, each in our own way, to lead, to encourage, to pray, and to invite our youth to this day when they will confirm for themselves that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it really was a whole community effort. Confirmants, I invite you in particular, but all of us, really, think back over the last 13 or 14 years or so. Who was it that came together with you to remind you that you belong to God and you are a part of the church? Students, when I was about your age, one of those people in my life was Judy Sense. Judy was my Sunday school teacher from the time we moved to West Virginia when I was in sixth grade to the time that I graduated from high school. Judy was a nurse. She worked long hours at the local hospital, but somehow she was always there for us. She listened to us. She encouraged us to serve on church committees, to sing in the choir. She organized our youth Sunday service every year. She recruited all the youth to help. She wrote all the prayers. She practiced with us Sunday after Sunday until with tears in her eyes, she watched as it all went well. Judy was one of the first people who told me that I should be a minister. And during my college and seminary years, she continued to encourage me. Still to this day, we exchange Christmas cards every year. Judy was one of the people who helped me know that I belong to God and I belong to the church until I came to believe it for myself. So who are those people for you? Maybe it was your parents or your grandparents. I suspect that they did not always feel worthy, and yet you kept asking them questions. You know, questions like, when is God's birthday? And why is the sky blue? And can Jesus fly? And what religion were the dinosaurs? And what do I do when she's mean to me? And how do I know when I'm in love? So many questions. And they did their best, they really did, to come alongside, to answer you, to speak to you about Jesus and the church. And then there were Sunday school teachers and youth group leaders. I can tell you, they didn't always feel qualified to speak to you about God. But there they were, like Judy Sense was for me, each and every Sunday with a lesson book in hand, cookies to eat, a juice box to drink, and on a really good day, maybe some glue and some glitter. And they taught you. They read with you. They sang with you. And you asked them some questions too. And I hate to break it to you, but all the answers are not in those teacher guides. Sometimes they were making it up as they went along. They did their best did their best to share with you what they knew about Jesus and to remind you that you belong. And you might not have noticed them, but there was the couple who sat behind you in worship every Sunday. There was a gentleman who always seemed to have candy in his pocket. Do you remember him? And there was the old woman who always gave you a hug and told you how pretty or how handsome you were in your new outfit. They didn't always feel worthy to speak to you about Jesus. They didn't know the right words to say or the current slang you were using with your friends at school, but still they loved you. They cared about you. And in their presence, their quiet words and hugs, they reminded you that you belong. And maybe you've even had that surprising person, one you didn't expect who spoke to you. Maybe it was on a mission trip or um, at a youth conference. 
Maybe it was someone at the shelter where you volunteered or a child who just came up and gave you a hug in the store at the mall. But if you think back, I'm sure you'll find someone who came alongside, who reminded you that Jesus loves you and that you belong. Yes, when they had come together. Long before we write our own statements of faith, Long before we figure out all the answers. Long before we even know the right questions. We belong to God. And we belong to the church. And somehow, with the help of the Holy Spirit, the pieces begin to fall into place. And when we gather together, it's a source of incomparable joy and strength. To the believers. Yes, today our students will stand before us. They'll make their personal professions of faith. And as you read through the statements of faith they've written for themselves in the confirmation booklet, you will come to know each one of them because those statements are truly their own. And yet there's so much more than that. For you are present in each and every one of them too. Just as these students will be for the generations that follow them. There might not be anything more important that we do together as a church than this. For when we come together, we all just might start to believe. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. A God of grace, we do give you thanks for your call to us, for the ways in which you gather us together as your church. Surround and strengthen us, O Lord. Inspire us for lives of faith, not just alone but together. For we do pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, at this time it is our great gift and honor to be able to welcome this year's confirmation class and have opportunity to surround them with our prayers, to join them in declaring their faith. You'll see places in the bulletin in bold that I hope that you will join with us as well. But this time, let me invite Danny Vaughn from the, as our clerk of session, one of our uh, confirmation mentors, as well as Megan, to come forward. And, um, and youth, as you hear your names called, please come forward and join us here on the steps as well. On behalf of the session, I present Logan Marie Bennett, Heidi May Ernst, Davis Jeffrey Glasgow, Ann Kingsley Hart, Audrey Catherine Hubis, Mackenzie Ray McCormick, Hugh Jamison Oaks, Colin Matthew Olinger, Jacob Samuel Olinger, Brickley Adam Oltman, Lucas Alexander Schumacher, Virginia Gray Sizemore, and McDowell Storm Young for the reaffirming of the baptismal covenant in which they were baptized. They now desire to profess publicly their faith and to assume greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission in the world. We rejoice that you now desire to declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry. In baptism, you were joined to Christ and made members of the church in the community of the people of God. You have learned of God's purpose for you and all creation. You've been nurtured at the table of the Lord and called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So hear these words from Holy Scripture. You are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God 
built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in which you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. As you now publicly declare your faith, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which you were baptized. So I ask you these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? You've now publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Will you share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you? Then together with the whole church, I invite you to stand that we might declare and confess our faith together using words drawn from those our confirmants have used to declare their own faith. I believe God, maker of heaven and earth, will forgive us, protect us, and will love us unconditionally no matter what. You cannot detect God's presence with an experiment, but he is there, guiding us and keeping us on the right track. His guidance leads us through life's challenges, and he will always provide for us. Even though God does listen to us, and here's what we have to say when we pray. I do not believe that God will just give us what we want right then and there. I believe that God always forgives us and acts with justice and mercy and grace. I believe that it is important to trust and love God with all your heart. He has a plan for all of us and it all leads to good. I believe that Jesus Christ is my one and true Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. I believe that Jesus spread the word of God and that he had many followers that tried to do the same. Jesus accepted everyone and loved everybody. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to practice loving everybody for who they are because this would make me a better person. Not only do I believe that you should follow in Jesus' steps, but I believe that we should set an example for others to do the same. I believe that the Holy Spirit is with us every day and loves each and every one of us. I believe that God as Holy Spirit will stick with you through anything and everything. I also see the Holy Spirit in my relationships and connections. I see it throughout my family and my friends. I feel it within me. I believe it is important to go to church to worship God as a community. It is also important to learn about God and to learn how to serve others. I'm not sure how I want to be a part of this community because to truly be in Unity Presbyterian Church, you have to be active in the community. And I'm just not sure how I want to be a part of it yet. As a member of Unity, I don't just want to learn. I want to love and understand my purpose was for being chosen here. I am so excited to continue my journey here at Unity, I believe. You may be seated. <clears throat> Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Mac with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Mackenzie with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes 
to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Kingsley with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Virginia with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Colin with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Lucas with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Brickley with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more till he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Jake with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Hugh with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Defend, O Lord, your servant Audrey with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Defend, O Lord, your servant Heidi with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Defend, O Lord, your servant Logan with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin, giving us new life, and empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. You have made us members of your body, the church, calling us together to be servants in the world. We thank you for leading Logan, Heidi, Davis, Kingsley, Audrey, Mackenzie, Hugh, Colin, Jake, Brickley, Lucas, Virginia, and Mac to this time and place of reaffirming the covenant you made in their baptism. Establish them in your truth and guide them by your spirit in order to continue the good work you have begun in them. Send them forth in the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By publicly professing their faith, Logan, Heidi, Davis, Kingsley, Audrey, Mackenzie, Hugh, Colin, Jake, Brickley, Lucas, Virginia, and Mac have expressed their intention to continue and to grow in the covenant God made with them in their baptism. Let us welcome them as they join with us in the worship and mission of the church. Look what is before your eyes. Let us join together. If you are confident that you belong to Christ, remind yourself of this, that just as you belong to Christ, so also do we. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you to share with us in ministry, for we are all one in Christ. May the Spirit continue to strengthen and sustain you in the worship and mission of the church. Alleluia. Amen. I think we might be able to clap at this point. So. <laughs> if y'all would come and take a step just down to the floor, we've got several gifts that we would like to give you. Uh, the first is a new gift this year, the uh, men's ministry. Several of the men have, um, have offered to provide an opportunity for our mentors. Each of our uh, youth has had a mentor throughout this year to provide them with a connection of passing on the faith. 
from themselves to our mentors and also from our students back to the mentors themselves. So let me invite all of our mentors to come forward at this time. They have um, silicone bracelets with the verse we just read and also the words um, belong and believe that they will pass on and they will also keep one for themselves. As our mentors return back to their seats, we've got several other gifts as well that, that we will have, um, have to pass out for you. Um, we have uh, framed letters that, uh, that are actually um, modeled after the letter that I myself received from the session at the Summersville Presbyterian Church for my own confirmation. Uh, I have every year I've given out those letters, the same letters to our confirmation students, and we've got a copy of that for you. We also have um, your uh, Bible that you'll be able to use for yourselves uh, going forward as students. And um, to connect you with our history here at Unity, we also have uh, wooden crosses that have come out of the floor from the historic sanctuary that you'll be able to carry with you as well. So let's pass those out for you as well. One more round of applause to welcome our newest members here at Unity Presbyterian Church. God bless you. It's such a joy to be able to celebrate this day with you and all along the journey of this day. Uh, we're hoping the sun will be out just enough for us to get our picture following the service. So do follow me out afterwards. We'll head out in front of the historic sanctuary and then we'll all join together for Lemonade on the Lawn in the Fellowship Hall following that as well. So God bless you. Thank you very much. You can head back to your seats. Friends, let us now show our friendship with Christ and our love for our neighbors by giving generously so that we may bear everlasting fruit of Christ's love. Let us now receive the morning offering.
pray. Holy God, in Christ you have chosen us to be your friends and to know your will in the world. Therefore we pray in Jesus' name that these tithes and offerings spread your love near and far. Hear us, O Lord, as we join together and pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, as we go forth from this place, as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. For you belong to God. You belong to the church. And together, as we come together, we all just might start to believe. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.